Hey guys, so recently Paramount invited me to go out to JPL, the Jet Propulsion Lab, which is maybe one of the coolest places I've ever been to. I got to sit down with Jonah Nolan and Kip Thorne for a few minutes and talk about Interstellar, and then we got to do a tour and see them building all of the crazy space robots. And then we got to go to the center of the universe, which is literally the command center because it is the point uh, on Earth where all communication goes to that room, which is insane. Check out some of my questions uh, and some of their questions and some of their answers and, uh, and, and, and let me know. The internet sent me questions. So, oh, and they sent me like no. dozens of questions. Did the internet send us answers? No. <laughs> okay. Is the timeline of your universe malleable or unchangeable? Oh, well now we're getting into time travel <laughs> paradox. So time is a personal thing. Uh, time flows for you differently than it flows for me. Not just psychological time, but physical time. It depends on where you are in the universe, depends on how you move. So yeah, it's malleable, it's very malleable. You ghost wrote the equations on Dr. Brand's uh, like study, right? Yeah, yeah. Are there any uh, like Easter eggs in there that people should be looking at for? So all 16 blackboards, and there are 16 of them, uh, you can find online at uh, interstellarwithgoogle.com. And yes, there's lots of nuggets in there. Uh, it basically tells the story of uh, how uh, Professor Brand is thinking about these gravitational anomalies, uh, how he thinks they may arise from forces that reside in the fifth dimension, and, uh, and having figured them out, understand then how to turn off gravity on Earth so that they, they can lift colonies into space. Well, now I really want to lift a colony into space. Like that's. <laughs> That sounds like a really cool thing to do. I read that you guys had uh, two rules, right? When writing it, it was the the nothing in the in the film will violate the established laws of physics and the speculations uh, about ill understood physical laws. The universe will spring from real science. Did you ever break those rules at all? No, we had science built into the project from the beginning, well, rather than me dreaming up a bunch of uh, a bunch of ideas and then asking Kip to kind of you know wave a magic wand over them. We we built the phenomena in the film out of good physics. You, you felt like you always had to get to that point where you'd make a leap into the unknown. So you need that initial leap. But the idea was to, whenever we made those leaps, to talk them through extensively with Kip and try to find a version that corresponded to a model of reality. I would say those were not rules. Those were guidelines. And uh, I think when I discussed those guidelines with uh, Jonah's uh, brother Chris, uh, his response was, yes, he absolutely signed on to those guidelines as long as they did not get in the way of making a great movie. I'm very pleased with how it came out. I think, I think the guidelines were, uh, were adhered to. Uh, that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much. I love, Jonah, that you, you cast this as sort of a puzzle-solving kind of thing, like where's the right place to start the movie. Did the two of you in the collaboration, in the course of your conversations, uh, remark upon both the similarities and the differences in what you do for a living? Endlessly. <laughs> <laughs> for me, the biggest revelation was the process of brainstorming with somebody who doesn't have much science background, but brings to the table a set of experiences uh, from the arts, from cinema, that I don't have. Jonah, did you have pre-existing ideas of what a physicist would be like? No, no, I, 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 don't, I don't think so. It felt like a chance for me to make amends for my wayward youth. But you uh, were scarred by physics at an early age, I it was, seems clear. I was, <laughs> It was just a great privilege to collaborate with Kip. I mean, he's a brilliant scientist, but also a brilliant educator. You know, I'd spent just a lot, enough time working in the movie business, and I kept trying to explain to Kip how difficult it might be to get the film made and how long it might take, and kept explaining that he had projects he'd been working on for three or four All decades. Right, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was a lovely idea that the wormhole was actually quite narrow, that the mouth of it was too narrow for the spaceship, and so the spaceship had to be modular so that it could be fed through the wormhole. And it made for this very exciting sort of claustrophobic... The wormhole ate the spaceship from the inside. Wow. Um, uh, which I spent a solid month trying to uh, imagine and then remembered that my job was simply to write the wormhole <laughs> eats the spaceship from the inside and let Chris figure it out. What it gave you in terms of claustrophobia and a tactility to the experience, it lost in grandeur and that sense of crossing some fantastic threshold. I mean, how realistic did it end up being? Yeah, so <clears throat> the idea that down near a black hole, time flows more slowly than far away 
is an old idea. It's built into Einstein's general relativity. Jonah and his brother Chris wanted a much bigger time difference. He said, I want uh, one hour on Miller's planet, which is in orbit around this black hole, to be seven years on Earth. And uh, I said to Chris, I said, uh-uh, I'm quite <laughs> sure that's not possible. And then I went home, as I had done with you a number of times, I went home and I thought on it and said, well, okay, I will let the black hole spin and I will do the calculation for a very, very fast spinning black hole, but I'm sure it's not going to allow anything like uh, one hour is seven years. And lo and behold, it did. In principle, it's possible. But you're saying there's a chance. There's yes, a chance. that's there's right. A chance. Yeah. Let me know in the comments what kinds of things you're curious about, what kind of science excited you about Interstellar, and make sure if you haven't seen the movie yet, or if you're a huge fan of it, to check it out on Blu-ray and DVD. It's out right now. It's out for digital download. Like and subscribe for more awesome movie stuff from Cinefix, and so I can keep going to do cool shit. Uh, and uh, yeah, now do the thing.